You can add your own company logo in your receipt. Make your own QR code. Click here. You can see your selling product. Double clicking. Product name and prices are there together with the picture. Change it as well. Picture is changing. Adding the quantity. Put them into shopping basket. You can select another item. Double clicking it. Adding into shopping basket. Select pay type by clicking it. Adding pay type amount. Automatically calculating change as well. Click the print button. Purchase summaries are automatically calculating. Also including your QR code, which including your website information. You can print a PDF or paper version. You have a beautiful receipt like this. Click next button means next customer. Receipt number is increasing. All other input is resetting it. You can change your cashier as well. If you go to sale history, it's automatically including purchasing information by receipt numbers. If you click this button, this part is save as as a separate file. Based on this information, we can create sale trend by hours or day or minutes. And also you can check sale quantity by cashiers. In addition, if double clicking it, it's correction mode, change to two, click back in shopping basket, it changed into two. Also delete the item by clicking buttons. Just prepare for subscribers who are using Excel 2016 version. If you go to icon one sheet, you can see a lot of icons. I just prefer for you and it took a lot of time, but I hope that this will give you a small benefit. Please do not worry about it. We start from opening Excel file. If you cannot understand it, just watching the video twice or three times, then you will get it. Let's start it. Go to view tab, deselect grid lines. You can give a color of sheet here. I will go to home tab, select this color. So that's gonna be background of sale receive BBA tool. In B1 cell, we can put our title bold and make it bigger. Let's think about information selling product. So that's gonna be product name, price, quantity. Lastly, we need a sum amount of selling product. In case of adjusting size of the cell, double click the line. It will adjusting it due to this size is too big. So you can make it like this way. We can think about payment information as well. So subtotal, which is individual total amount before tax. Tax, sum of item total, which is subtotal plus tax. Pay type, cash or credit card. Paid amount by buyer, change. Let's make it a bit nicer. So select here, all borders, select here, all borders. Double click here, all borders as well. This is our input. Make it bigger a little bit here. This is our payment summary. Let's give a color. Select here. I will give this color white font color. Control one, border, select this color, that one. Okay, apply same thing here, this two. Control one, this color, select here. Okay, from K to N, we are going to make a receipt. I will give you white color. Let's edit header information. We select this, control one button, go to alignment, select center across selection, okay button. The actual values are still sitting column K, make it bigger, B, make it bigger. We need more space, so I will make it like this. We need another information, receipt number, dates, and cashier. For date, we need a function, which is now. I will merge the cell, select here and that one. We also merge the cell here. We will give a name here, something like this two, put it here. 
select sheet one, click right hand mouse button, rename main and enter. Normally cell A1, you can put your company logger. In order to do that, please go to insert illustration pictures, this device, and I will select this and insert. Adjusting the size, highlight the title. In here, we are going to put the information of the receipt, product, quantity, price, total. Select all, make it bold and center. Control one, border. Select this line and up and down. Okay, it looks nice. If you click the plus sign, you can create a new sheet, change the name, put product. I will select the product information here. Plus again, here rename, sale history. One more click. Here we added cashier. Sale history, we collect all the history of uh, our selling. Cashier is list of our cashier. In case of a product list, let it prepare it. In my case, I have the following 10 items, price, location of the image of each product. To be make sure, in my case, it sounds W here, but if you click it, it actually reverse slash. In case of a sale history, prepare the following, a receipt number, date, cashier, product, price, quantity, and total, which is like receipt numbers are sitting here and date and cashier is here. So that's gonna be here. This product quantity price and total that's uh, sitting next. In case of cash flow, I prepare the list of the cash. Grid line is unselected. It. Let's go back to main sheet here. I would like to make a list box. Go to date data validation. Select list source part go to cashier sheet select this line ok button if you click and then you can select different cashier which is much nicer than typing the name of the cashier and in our case from here below it's gonna be row 10 afterwards we are going to add it a lot of different product informations therefore it'll be nice to fix the row so please go to view tab freeze panel freeze panel Let's make a VBA, Alt F11, go to insert, click module. You got the module here, module one. Let's change the name here, F4 button. Let's put it sale receipt, but it has to be one word, then close it. So let's make a sub, sub, shopping basket and enter and automatically end sub is creating let's testing msg box testing then enter so when you see it changing automatically to capital letter which means your coding is correct in order to run vba click f5 button or triangle button and square button is reset of the your sub let's test it run Message box is correctly popping up, so close it. Let's make it commented it, this one, which is not a real coding. What we are going to do is product list information. For example, computer, this value going to be sitting here. Price, this 700 is going to be sitting here. Let's change the format here. So go to home tab and English dollar sign. Same here, control C, alt ES format of course we can copy paste like this manually but let's make it more nicely so we create window just click the window and then automatically this value plug it into here go back to the vba to make user form alt f11 insert user form click make it bigger here by mouse dragging it f4 button you got user form properties here we change the name as you wish it so product list form enter next toolbar we create header click the image click it like this image property back color black here create text box here then we can put product list 
go to text line select center go to font you can select the font you like so i go impact select it maybe 24 okay color white put it back here go to special effect click special effect flat go to back style zero we are done for the header part now go to toolbox and select the list box drag it make it like here and make it bigger after clicking the list box press F4 button we are going to give product sheet information into user form go to row source here we put product this information from A1 to C11 row sheet we give product that A1 to C11 enter we got the ID number however we don't have product name and etc to solve this problem go to column count change it to 3 we have a product ID product name and price however we don't like the header we change this into true we are going to have a headers then we need to change the row source this is going to be 2 then we can see headers are sitting like this click the user form again go to caption let's change the name as product list it looks much nicer now close it let's make this product list is popping up into our sheet please go to the sale receive bba let's create another sub product list and enter button here we are going to call product list form which we made it copy product list form point show enter let's test it whether it's working or not f5 it's perfectly working run again press f5 button and then i realized cursor is sitting inside of the header and also our user form name is a list product list so it would be nice to change product selection here so let's do it go to here click the text box f4 button first select enable from true to false it's changing it and then going down text part change to selection close it go to VVA again let's run again F5 button perfect now the issue is gone close it so our next challenge will be this product name is going into here product name price going into the price cell close it double click the text box then automatically you will have this text box this part is called object and this part called the procedure so in here if list box is clicking it some coding is activating basically you can take this but in my case i will take the double clicking it which is this one then something will happen remove the previous procedure in here i will add some coding so let's type range open bracket c3 and then close it is equal to list box which we made it one in list box and make a list in the list again list box one point list index which is here comma one which is a column number close it and enter let me go back the list box again double click here this is our list box you can see list box this is our list and list index 0 is here this index 1 is here and 2 is here okay close it and go back again double click in the same manner i copy Control c Control v c4 that gonna be 2 which is a price let's make product id as well create somewhere here p3 zero right and close it go back to sell receipt f5 button just click it is a selection double click magnifier is in the product name price is in there correctly product id which is a three is correctly applied it here everything is perfectly working but i will put this into column queue 
close it, double click it. But I just also realized that it will be awesome automatically close it right after selecting the necessary inputs. Double click it. In this case, we need unload me. That's it. We complete this part. During creating product list user form, it was a bit cumbersome to run VBA. Therefore, let's make a button which is a link to the product list. Let's go to main sheet. Please go to insert tab, click illustration, shapes. I will take this rectangle, drag it. You will get this. You can see the yellow dot and moving a little bit, make it more circle. Let's type it product list, list. Click white circle, go to home tab, middle and middle, bold, make it bigger. Click right hand mouse button, go to assign macro, select product list, OK button. Let's check this button is linked to the VBA code. Click it. It's working properly, so close it. Let's put it here somewhere. Let's make the button a bit nicer. Select the button, control one, go to effect, 3D format, click here. Select what you like. I will select round. It looks nicer. In the same manner, we can create a lot of different buttons as well. In order to copy, hold the control button with the mouse and you can drag it. You can create another button like here. You create another one again. In the new button, you go here inside and change the name. I will create the delete button. Make it small. Control one, change the color to dark blue. Holding control button and drag it and make another one clear. In the same manner, we can create next button or print button, etc. In order to speed up, I just create it like this. One important thing is click the button again, control one button, go to size and properties, properties, select don't move or size with cells. Which means that, for example, later on when we create a delete button, it will delete the line here. Let's delete it. You can see the clear button is changing at the moment. In order to avoid this situation, so we have to set property like that way. You can apply same property setting for all other buttons. Let's try again. Click, click, control one button, go to property, select don't move button. When you see here is an icon is in it. In order to make this, you can go for illustration, select the icon, go to business. You can choose the icon which you like it. Select this one, insert button. You can see this is popped up, which I apply here and make it small grouping together. That's how you can make it. For somebody who has a older than 2016 version of Microsoft Office, prepare the Excel icon collection file. Please note that all icon in this file copyright by Microsoft. Just prepare for subscribers who are using Excel 2016 version. If you go to icon one sheet, you can see a lot of icons. I just prefer for you and it took a lot of time, but I hope that this will give you a small benefit. In icon 2, also you can find another icons as well. We create the product sheet, which is our database. After that, we create the product list window, which is a user form. From here, we link to the main sheet input data. Lastly, we link with the VBA button. What we are going to do is following from this main sheet, input value and product summary value will go into sale receipt area. In order to do that, we will use a shopping basket button. The main function will be input values are adding into sale receipt. Before to go, I would like to make another button. So go to insert, illustration, shapes, rectangle, selecting it putting into here, holding out button, and then moving it. It allow perfect match with the cell size. 
Click right hand mouse button, bring to front, select again, right mouse button again, assign macro, select product list, and OK button. Go to shape fill, select no fill, shape outline, no outline. What we've done is we create another button which is exactly the same function as product list button. Clicking it and it's popping up. Next, select the shopping basket button. Go to assign macro, select shopping basket, OK button. Now button is linked with the BBA. Alt F11 button. So our idea is the product name going into product name here. Price is price, quantity is quantity. So starting with range K11, which is that value equal to range C3. The meaning of this coding is these twos are not equal, but this C3 value will move into K10 value. Let's test it. I will click the button here. You can see the bulb is moving from here to here. According to this one line, we are able to move from input value into receipt area. In the same manner, we can create price and quantity. Control C, Control V. So in case price, we are put M and that's going to be 4. Control C, Control V. For quantity L, that's 5. Delete this one, run again. It works fine, but the quantity is uh, nothing. So let's add in another one to run again. Hit the button, it's working. For this two line, select the currency with uh, English. In case of column C, these cells are fixed location. Therefore, we can make it simple by using name box here. To use name box is very simple. Select the cell, adding the name. Here we put the product name and enter button. Then you can see this cell has a name. In the same manner, we can have here price. Same manner for here quantity, some amount, subtotal, tax, item total, pay type, pay amount, change. In order to speed up, I already given names, quantity for quantity, sum for some amount, subtotal for subtotal, tax for tax, item total, pay type, pay the amount, change. Also product ID here as well. Alt F11, so we can remove this part, bracket, product name, which we made it, and this. So let's test it whether this is working. Click the button, perfectly working. In the same manner applied for price and quantity as well. The next part will be the row here is always a changing depending on selection. It can be 12, 13, 14, 15, etc. But here is a fixed row. So we create a row num, which is 11. We can fix it this part to then row num. Control C, Control V, Control V. Let's test it whether it's working or not. Go here, mouse, click shopping basket button, perfectly working in the next line. Next challenge will be, this is always selecting the last value in this row. For example, like here, Control Shift, direction down key from the last value, Control Shift up key, it will hit exactly the last value. We need to use the name box again. Control Shift down key, select the last cell, go here, last cell, enter. Control Shift up key again. So we are going to create the coding like what I just show. Alt F11, remove 11, last cell, point and open bracket, Excel, up, close the bracket, point, row. This means exactly representing that value, but we need plus one here, plus one. Row num is selecting that value. This row information will apply below three lines. Let's test it. Go to view, intermediate window, question mark, copy this line, Control C, Control V, 
enter button, we got 12, which is row 12 here. Tested it again. Click here and I will choose cup this time or click shopping basket button. Now it's perfectly working here as well. What we are missing now is item total. In order to implement this, we need subtotal first, which gonna be price times quantity and enter button. Tax gonna be, you can choose the percentage which you like. So subtotal 8% I will apply here and enter. Item total going to be add plus tax, enter. That's our item total, which gonna be sitting here. Alt F11 button, copy the line, control V, item total, column N. Remove everything. Let's start it again. Computer one, quantity, shopping basket, which is adding it. It's including tax as well. Again, mouse, double click it, shopping basket again. Next, let's talk about pay type. Alt F11, I will create a new sub, sub payment underscore type, enter. Before coding something, I can tell you one trick. In case of cells, we using name box to make it simple. In case of shapes, you can also give a name, not name box, but selection panel, which is go to home tab, click magnifier, at the end, there's a selection panel. Click it, and then you can see a lot of different things. So for example, I will create another button, illustration and shapes, and select one of the box. It's show rectangle 23. Click the button. You can give a name here. We can give test box, enter. In the same manner, apply this idea into these three buttons and icon as well. I click here, this button is called card and this icon is called card. The check icon, check boxes, cash as well. Close the selection panel here. I will show you how to apply this idea into VBA. Go back to macro. In payment type, adding pay type. Uh, equal application point color and holding control button, select three buttons, right hand mouse button, assign macro, payment type, okay. Buttons and macros are linked. Let's check how it works. Click it, cash, click it, check, click it, card are working. Simply use this color code which means VBA will call name of buttons in selected cell, which is pay type cell. There are many different ways, but this is the most simple way, I believe. Normally, after selecting payment type, the next step is paid amount. Shortly after selecting pay type, automatically selecting paid amount cell. What we can do is pay type and point select. Enter. Let's see how it works. Choose a check. Automatically, paid amount cell is selected. By your pay $800, then you can add it like here. Change gonna be equal to paid amount minus some amount. Change part is done now. We need to implement some amount part. That's gonna be sum of entire this row, right? Means that some amount going to be sum of cell n tell to cell n11 or the last value of n column. Go back to shopping basket. In case of sum amount, that is output location. So we put it here, sum amount equal worksheet functions, which allow to use function in worksheet. So sum bracket from sheet one, which is main, sheet one is main, sheet two is a product, etc. Point range, open bracket, and 10, and that, and 11, closed, close the bracket, and enter. Let's test it, F5 button, 
the value is correctly applied it. So in this case, we run shopping basket again. Therefore, one more mouse has been added. It. Our value is a 783 correctly applied it. When you're looking at the sum, it's 810. The reason why is wrong because we have a fixed value. Therefore, that part has to be changed. To change that part is relatively simple. Delete the 11 or to here. Last cell, Control C, Control V. Click again. Now the values are correct, 837 and 837. In case of sum amount, we use a worksheet function and sum. We apply the range. Also, we reuse the row num idea here as well. As an error handler, I will add in calculate, which we recalculate the cell values later on. Okay, everything looks fine now. It'll be a good idea to decorate cells a bit. Case of quantity, this is input. Go to home tab, fill color Y and bold and middle. In case of both sum amount and paid amounts are important, let's emphasizing it. Select the sum amount, go to home tab, fill color black, font color white and bold. Paid amount, select home tab, Fill color purple, white color bold, pay type bold. In terms of error handling perspective, what if we don't have information for product name, price, and quantity? This shopping basket adding function will not executing it. So let's adding this part. Go back to macro. If product name is equal to empty, then exit sub which means that if we have an empty value or product name, then we stop this macro. In the same manner, we can copy Ctrl C, Ctrl V, apply to price as well, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, quantity as well. Let's move on to correction sub. I will make a correction sub first, sub correction enter button the idea gonna be following if we double click the one of the lines here that value is going back to immediately here that will be our correction mode and then we change the value click again and put back there which means that these values are starting values these cells will be destination cell go back to vba in order to do that we will using above section copy product names first Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V, enter. In same manner, you copy again, Control C, Control V, that's price, that's M for quantity, and copy again, Control C, Control V, change to quantity, that going to be L. The following question going to be, how can we define the row num then? This is because the row num going to be just selected by the users here, right? That is also very simple. First, we copy this, Control C, Control V. We can put selection point row. The row means is always bring the row information of the given code. Let's test it, what it means of this selection row. So put the cursor in here, press F8 button. The VVA coding is executing line by line. So F8 is started, F8 again, and F8. If you put the mouse cursor in there, it shows the corresponding values, which is 19 at the moment. Go back to sheet. Our cursor is sitting row 19, which means that our row num correctly bring the information of a selected cell rows. Square button, reset. I think it will be a good idea the row num information is also printing somewhere here. Therefore, I prepared already here the location. Put here is index, enter. Here I will put mod, enter. Let's go back to macro. Index equal to row num, enter. Which means that this row num information is printing the location here. 
Let's test it whether it's working or not. First of all, I will put the cursor here in 12, drag it down here a bit, press F8. Now you can see index value 12. So it's correctly reading it. Reset. In case of mode, I would like to mention it. Now we are in the correction mode. In order to do that, I just copy this line, Control C, Control V, change to mode, correction. Which means that we know we are in the correction mode and it's printing correction. If not a correction mode, and then we can put no correction. Our correction sub is uh, done now. The next part is uh, double clicking it, executing correction mode. In order to do that, go to main sheet, double clicking it. It shows like this, the object part, clicking it, select worksheet, procedure part, selecting it, select before double clicking it. The below part, I will deleting it. Here we are going to add some code. Go back here. If double clicking it, it's automatically go inside of the cell. To prevent this part, we need a small treatment. That'll be this cancel part. Control C, Control V, equal, select through and enter. The next part is we don't want to delete any information above row 10, right? These are all important information. So let's add an error handler here. In this case, we can use a target. If target point row information smaller than 10, then exit sub enter. Let's add one more line. Control C, Control V, delete this part, equal this. If target is empty, then also exit the sub. Finally, we can call our correction sub call our sale receipt point select the correction enter we are done for this part as well let's test it whether it's working or not i will delete these two parts first of all let's see whether computer is working i will double clicking it double click perfectly going back to here then i will change the quantity to two enter put it back into shopping basket i got the error here put L, it should be fine. Save it. Try again and adding shopping basket. The result shows that it's not correcting it, but adding as a new item, which is not perfect yet. Let's change that part. Go back to macro. I think the reason is because of this line, because we are always adding one line there. Row num is always increasing it, so we have to make it two different conditions. Therefore, we need to use if statement. If correction is in the cell, then row num is equal to index. Enter. Else is the below cases. And if the meaning is following. In correction mode, once we are in the correction mode, this mode is automatically correction mode. Therefore, our if is uh, executing as a true. We are going into this part. We already know the selected row by selection row information, which is row num, row num is index. That index value is become a new row num, which will apply below lines. If not a correction mode, we are following same as before. Next part, this mode is going back to default setting, which is no correction mode. Control V, put no. In case of index also has to be changed. So copy this part, Control V here, which means in case of adding function, the row norm is always index and this value is changing it. Select this two line, tap, select this two line and tap, which is inside of this if statement. So we distinguish correction mode and add mode. Let's test it whether it's working or not. Go back here and I will delete this part. Now I'm going to use mouse, double click it. It's put it back here, changing the quantity to five and enter, adding it to here. Now perfectly working instead of adding below lines here.
The reason why I use index and mode is because there is no defining ID numbers in the our receipts. Let's move on to clear button. Go back to VBA, make a new sub, clear underscore settings, enter button. This part is pretty simple. Move this part here a bit. The main idea is all input values become an empty cell. In order to do that, we using name box like here and equal empty and enter. In addition, correction mode become a no correction as well, which is our default setting. So we are done for it. Next, go to sheet, link button with the VBA, click right hand mouse button, assign macro, clear settings. Okay, let's check it, click it. Maybe it's a good idea to remove this uh, sum amount as well. Copy this part, control C, go back to macro here, comma, Ctrl V, try again, it's better. Let's create the sub first. Go back to macro, sub, delete, enter. Let's define row sum first, which is a selection point row, because user will select one of the lines here, rows row num closed bracket point delete so we complete delete function go back to main sheet let's link it click right hand mouse button assign macro delete okay i will delete the mouse selecting press delete button delete function is perfectly working however the sum amount which is $772, but we are still $907. We have to change this part, go back to macro. Then using this idea, some amount, control C, control V, copy row sum, control C, change this part to row sum. Let's test it. Go back to sheet, select the computer, delete button. We can see some amount is perfectly working. As error handler perspective, above row 10 shouldn't be removed it because it's including a lot of necessary informations. Let's adding error handler for this part. Back to macro. For error handler, we have to create somewhere here. We can use sheet 1 information. Double click sheet 1. Copy these two lines, Ctrl C, back to the list up, Ctrl V. E. We don't have a target but row num, Ctrl C, row num, Ctrl V. For a second part, we can reuse this format, Ctrl C, delete it, change it to L, which is quantity, delete the number, row num, closed bracket. It means that row L, which is a quantity, that row, if the value is empty, delete function won't work. In the same manner, we can make product, price, total as well. I just create the additional three lines, increasing back. And as a last step, let's call clear setting, copy this part, call clear setting and enter. We complete delete function. Let's test it. I will select football, press delete button, everything become empty. Let's test it one more time. I will erase this part, select this row, press delete button, and it doesn't work. So our error handler is working as well. It will be a good idea if we select a row, automatically highlighting it. In order to do that, First, select the range, Control shift down, go to Home tab, Conditional Formatting, New Rule, select Use a Formula to determine which cell to format, Equal, Row, Open Bracket, K, 10, press F4 button 3 times, 1, 2, 3, close the bracket, which means that our column K is fixed, equal to, 
index if column case row information is equal to index then we apply follow format go to format select bold color white fill blue okay okay back here as you can see row index 10 which is 10 that row highlighted it if double clicking it index changed to 12 and also the row is highlighted it the next possible problem we can have is if we deleting a lot then like this row is deleting it and then the color is shorter and shorter keep moving up so in order to prevent this situation let's add an additional function we are going to use the recording function go to developer tab record macro okay control c up this range up to here control c click a 10 button and then drag it down to let's say 30 alt e s select format okay click p8 go back to developer tab stop recording go back to vva now you see module one is creating it so if you're clicking it there's a lot of things are happening go back to say receipt module create a new sub sub clear formatting enter go back to module one copy this part Control c Control v delete this part tap then we can add a sheet one point Control c Control v so the idea is very simple sheet one main sheet select the range of this part copy it from cell a 10 to u 30 rows paste the special which is only format and after that we select a p8 that's all press control button and create one more line i will create a clear format button click right hand mouse button assign macro clear format okay i forgot one more line go back to vva we need a disk line which means application cut copy mode is false this copied range is deselecting it so we finished clear format part as well we create adding basket which is adding function after that product list payment type correction mode is added it clear function delete button lastly clear format sub what we are going to do is following photo adding function print function store and next and save as file function as well let's continue as next challenge we are going to create the add photo here depending on selected product we already prepare our images location we are going to use this information go back here we are also using product id for selecting folders here as a recall let's go back to vva go to forum double click double click here and look at the q3 which is a product id when we double click the product list form the id product is a change to be clear i will change this bar into product id that looks more nicer better also i changed these two lines as well go back here in shopping basket in correction mode we also change product id as well depending on selecting rows therefore product id is equal to sheet 2 which is product sheet entire column b point find product names close the bracket and row it means that in product sheet in entire column b we are searching for product name that's row information but here we are having header therefore we need minus one now let's add in photo adding sub sub photo edit with sheet one and with 
which means that we are going to add some coding which only relevant for sheet one. If directory open bracket pass name which is sheet two range D then we need row information then product ID plus one due to the header closed bracket value comma dv directory then this which means not equal to empty cell then so we are searching for directory in product sheet column d with row information then with pictures which is another width inside of a width and end width select these two tab key inside of we are selecting picture also we need end if here now inserting what we are inserting entire this part control c control v so you need a space here by the way in inside of the selected picture we create another width and and width width shape range so we are defining the range of a shape creating and with select tab key again in the shape range we are having this code which means locking the shapes ratio true means that it stays original proportion when we resize it so let's go back here select one of the shape control one property go to size click or unclick is lock aspect ratio give a height 110 around the 3.86 centimeter width is same so right square means that again height is 3.86 width is 3.86 centimeter then also give a name for it this part will be home tab selection panel giving name like card select again tab key so we complete the shape range settings now we are going to define the location of the shape that's gonna be e3 we need another width with shapes and width what we need is this part so left side is in sheet one main sheet range e3 top part also e3 and top so we define the top and left we need a this coding which means the shape has to be visualizing let's move here let's test it whether it's working or not i will select smartphone quantity one press f8 so we can see photo here press f8 again adjusting the size then we got the error this line is problematic control x put it here and enter now i see we have to delete this photo manually so we will upgrading that part later on press f8 again size is adjusting it now location it's working seems like in right location now so the idea is following first we create the if statements after that we create the insert picture in inside of this web we set up the picture format then select the location lastly highlight the picture let's adding delete function in photo adding sub first i will introduce to you one nice formula which is resumed next means if we got the error still we continuously go next round in case of clicking photo or not is not really bothering the main functions therefore it'll be good to introduce in here and second why don't we use the recording function again go to developer tab recording macro okay selecting it deleting it developer tab stopping it go back to macro we have these two lines Control x Control v change this into sheet one all right let's try it again in this time we assume we already have an existing photo f8 button 
select and delete and bar font again it's working properly it would be nice to have a highlighting line around the photos let's adding that part by using recording function again go to develop tab record macro okay selecting the photo control one button field and line select line solid line outline color blue 2.5 select cell v9 develop a tab stop reckoning it back to macro change this part into sheet one i think we don't need these two parts we don't need this part either space space again copy them all Control c go back here tab key Control v let's make it a bit nicer just Control x this part Control v delete this part it looks much cleaner save it let's test it again this time i will choose computer press f8 Now we are starting the new coatings. It's working perfectly fine. Now we finish the photo editing part as well. After completing photo editing sub, we have to link with existing part. Please go to user form here. Double click here. Here we give a call photo editing. That's it. So save it. The main idea is this part going to be printing it as a starting point you can add company logo here so i just use it this logo for this example as a next step it will be a good idea we have a summary of the payments not this payment but whole receipt therefore we have to use this sum amount let's use this part sum and before tax equal button Take that value and enter. From here to here, Control C here, Alt E S value. Okay. Go to here, item part and okay. Tax gonna be some amount time, eight percent in this example. Total is sum plus tax. Enter. Pay type gonna be that value. Paid amount going to be same as here. Change is to that value. Selecting all, home tab, click here, English. Let's give a new name. Selecting all, summary. So that value going to be below here. Erase it first. Then come here. Let's restart it. Click valve one, adding here. Add again, cup and adding again. Pay type, cash, amount 15. Let's test it. So our values are correctly printing here as well. Let's create a new sub. Let's go back to macro. Before to go for clarity, I will make this part is more clear format. So select here, click this button, and it's going to front. It looks better. Here I create a sub, print receipt. Term. What we are going to do is copy receipt summary printing below part of the receipt for defining summary location we need a row num let's reuse this part we don't need the one line below so here control c control v next we don't want to print the highlight color to remove the highlight is a simple make empty this index cell then it's gone therefore index and this highlight part is gone now copy receipt summary point copy enter go back to sheet so we are copying up to here printing two lines below here column m alt e s value okay so from here to the end go to home tab line right from here to in the end Due to cash part center now deleting it make it in vba here 
So main sheet column M, row information. So row num, two line below, so plus two, closed bracket, point, move a bit here, then paste the special as values. Perfect. Go to clear format, copy this part, control C, paste it. Let's have an error handler. If some amount is empty, the macro will stop or paid amount is smaller than some amount, then we will give error message. For that, we need if statements and message box. If some amount is empty or some amount is greater than paid amount, then message box, we can say no paid amount has to be higher than some amount and if and also need exit sub as well. Let's test it. F8. Copy. Paste it. Remove the copy selection. It would be nice to have a footnote. Thank you for purchasing and QR code. Let's create a QR code first. Go to cashier sheet. I already prepared my QR code, which is my channel information. Go to insert tab. Add in. Get add in. Store here. QR for office, enter. You can have this, click add button. In my case, it's already there. So add in, my add in already have that one. If you click in it, you can have this side window, copy your website information, control C, and go to here, control B, error correction, hi, click insert. You got your own QR code, which including your website information. Let's close it. Control C, go back to our main sheet. Control V here. Now I'm going to create the thank you part. Insert illustration shapes rectangle. Make it like this. Type the message you want to add in. Then go to home tab, middle, middle, bold, bigger as you wish. And then I will make bigger this part a bit. Click again. Home tab, font color black, control one button, fill, no fill, line, no line. Close it. Holding control button and click the box, chair format, align center, make a group, go to home tab, here, selection panel. This is a selected one. Let's give a name, footnote, enter. The name for this is footnote. The next challenge, this part will be below receipt summary, right? Back to macro. Let's reuse it from photo editing. Copy this line, control C, then we can selecting it. Control V here, change this part to footnote. Copy one more time, control C, control V. Then we can also go up here, copy this part, which is visualizing it through. First, footnote is visualizing it. We select the visualizing one. After selection, we can define the location of footnote. So selection left equal to sheet one K column. We take the row num information, adding seven more plus point left, enter. Copy again, control C, control V, that gonna be top. That's also top. Here will be 10. Next, we will define the printing setup. The first location of a printing. Sheet 1, setup, print area, column K1 to N, row num, M plus 18 more. Sheet 1, print out, comma, 3 comma more, and true, and Four comma moi, false. Enter. Lastly, our cursor will be cell P9. If you want to printing as PDF file, print Microsoft printed to PDF, then you will get PDF form. Or you can select actual printer, then it will print it in paper. So I will set it up as a PDF form. Let's go back. 
Let's highlight this part a bit nicer. So I will emphasize total part. Let's just select the location back here. Go to Home tab, Conditional Format, New Rule. Use a formula to determine which cell to format. Our new rule will be based on column M equal M10. Press F4 three times. One, two, three. Equal that total and this exactly the same as that part and then click format border select up and down font bold okay okay let's make another line select the range home tab conditional formatting new rule select here equal to m10 f4 three times one two three equal that then put some this part and this. Then go to format, border. I will take that one on the upper part. Okay and okay. It looks quite nice now. As additional information, this part is empty and the conditional format will be gone. Same for here as well. Delete and disappearing. Put it back. Let's test it. Go back to VVA. We already know here is working, so make breakpoint. Click here, F5, already up to here is done. Then F8, that part is gone. F8 again, F8, F8, F8. I will move here and print and selecting it. Click the dot, the breakpoint is gone. Open the PDF receipt. We have a beautiful sale receipt here. The next step will be link with the button which we created before. Go back here, click the button, assign macro, print receipt, okay. Let's move on to the next function, which is a next button, which means that one customer is complete his payments and we are going to restart everything from scratch. The main idea of this function is following. Once we click next button, all this area become empty. Second, the detailed information of the sale receipt is going into sale history sheet and store here by receipt number. The detailed information has a two part, receipt number, date, cashier. Secondly, product, quantity, price, and total part. Let's give a name for these three cells by using name box. Click here, M5. I will give you receipt num, enter. Here, date. Here for cashier, enter. Next, create the new sub. Go back to VVA. Here, sub store and next enter as a starting point we need a new row num which is based on the sale history sheet let's reuse existing one i will copy this part Control c Control v but we need a new last cell so let's put it last cell too Control c here go back to sheet go to sale history and click here Control shift to direction down key. Click the last cell, Control V, last cell two, and enter. Go back here. Go back to VBA. This part has to be row num two. Also, we need the existing row num as well. So copy this part, Control C, Control V here. In case of row num two, we have to add it plus one because we go next lines. Let's create the new variable, which is a alt item, row num minus nine, enter. What it means, back to here, one of the last value here, minus nine rows here. Next part is grabbing this information and plug it into this sheet. So we need a something range like this way. As a reminder, in shopping basket, we built this idea. That one is moving into here. Our receipt number will be here. The destination gonna be sheet three, which is a sale history. Go back here, control V. We are going to put sheet three, receipt number, 
will be column A, A, and row num two, which we define here, and still column A, right? So we are up to here, and row num two plus all item minus one because of the header row close the bracket point value equal receipt num enter it is still red something is missing so i think here we forgot this enter receipt number will move here but not single value but range we can apply this idea to date and cashier as well copy entire line control c control v change to b change to b change to date cash here is same idea this part is done now let's move this part we can still use this information control c control v that gonna be d this part will be G. That means from D to G here. The other part is from sheet 1, which is main sheet. Our range will be K to N, row num, close the bracket, point value. The meaning of this part is from K10 here is fixed value. We start from here until the last row column is N. That is the meaning of this part. Let's test it. Before starting, I will put dummy number 100 and enter as a starting point. Then I will move to sale history. I will move around again. Press F8. Receipt number is uh, coming. Dates coming. Cashier and product information. Back here. So all these informations are correctly applied. Reset button. Moving information part is over. The next part is resetting the existing informations. Let's hide in footnote for first. Go back to macro. Let's reuse it. Our existing code. I will copy this line. Control C. Select the footnote. Then Control C here this part control V make it to false which is disappearing delete false enter let's see whether it's working make a breakpoint here click press F5 F8 selected it press F8 disappearing removing breakpoint now let's clean up this part for removing this part is uh, let's using clear function. In order to do that, let's using name box again, control shift uh, right direction key and down direction key. Again, go to name box. I give all receipt as a name and enter. Go back to VVA. We give uh, all receipt point clear contents. It will erase this area and enter call clear setting now we need to remove this photo as well let's reuse it existing code go to photo editing copy these two lines Control c Control v here the next step is we will update this receipt number for next payment in order to do that let's go back to sale history click here Control shift down key give a name all rows to enter go back to main sheet VBA this receipt number is our destination so we copy this part control C control V equal worksheet function max from all rows to which we created closed bracket adding one number more enter Let's link it to the button with the next button. Click right hand mouse button. Go to Zyme Macro. Select store and next. I prepare a new example for testing. Press next button. And we got the error here. Let's check. 
it's clear settings. Let's add S here. Reset. Next button. Photo is disappearing. Receipt number edited and this content has been disappeared. Let's check the cell history. Receipt information stored correctly as well here. As an error handler perspective, after putting into shopping basket without clicking print button, I just click the next button. Let's see what will happen. We got the error because we have to hide footnote. There is no footnote, therefore it create error. In order to avoid this part, we can copy this line, control C, here, control V, reset, save it. I will click the next button again. The other thing is that blue lines are still there, so we have to fix that part as well. Go to clear settings in VBA. Here, I will define index equal to empty, which means index part will be disappear like this. We complete next button as well. Before move on next function, let's have a cleanup. Go back to VBA. I will select here, click right hand mouse button, remove module one, click no. I just remove unnecessary modules. Our next function will be, if we keep storing and it will be gigantic, let's save as cell history as a separate file. Therefore, I create another new buttons. Let's create a new sub. Sub, save as, enter, and then go to sheet, click the button, assign macro, save as file. Okay, go back to VBA. In this time, I will show you how to declare variables. For that, deem wb as work, book enter dim ws as worksheet so we define workbook as wb worksheet as ws dim last row as integer enter control c control v start column enter control c control v start row we create three more integers the main idea of this function is the following. Basically, we copy all this information and save as new file. The location of a file will be as same as this file. Also, you can define the name as well. File name, it including the date of creation of the file. As a starting, open a new Excel file. Let's start with a set wb equal to application point workbooks at enter set ws equal to wb point worksheet one enter next let's select the starting location of the result move here a bit that gonna be sheet three cell history with sheet three and with We'll code inside here. Start call will be first column, so one. Start row will be second. Last row will be point cells in sheet three point cell point rows count comma start call close the bracket point Excel up point row enter point range. Again, define the cells like above sentence, start rows, comma, start call, comma. So we select a range now. Now, cells again, last rows, comma, and start call, plus nine, close the bracket. Then copy, space, ws, which we defined, and range, cell a1, enter. Next, we will save as a new file wb point save as space this workbook pass w but this is a backslash in your case and i will put this part that gonna be file name space and format now comma space 
that format and enter. So save as the location as this workbook slash file name will be sale history underscore. Then we adding this format of dates will be together as file name. Active workbooks close. Active window means closing the new file. Let's test it how it works. We'll move here, press F8, started it, and open new file. Then we got the bug from this line. So we are missing the point here. Put point, try again, press F8. We got book four now, press eight. We copy the necessary information, press F8 again. So the previous file is closed. Go back to picture folder. Now you can see new file is created. Let's open it. We can successfully create as a new file only for sale history part. Looking at the head of the table, I just realized that quantity and price are wrongly placed. It. I will exchange it. It'll be a good idea to have a statistic of our sale activities. In order to do that, we need the following steps. Select cell A1, Control Shift, Direction Right Key, Down Key. Holding Control, T button, Create Table, OK. Put the cursor into the table, go to insert tab, select pivot table, from table and range, click OK. We have a new sheet here. I will change the name, rename, pivot. For row, I will put the date, drag it and drop it. Column, I will put products. For values, I will put total amount. Close it for now. Let's remove grand total. I will put inside and click right hand mouse button. Go to pivot table options, totals and filters. Deselect grand totals. Okay. Much cleaner now. Select entire area. Control one button. Border. Make a border here. Okay. Make this area. Go to home tab. Select English. Decrease decimal by one. Go to view tab, deselect grid lines. We already prepare our pivot table. Let's give a name for this part. Sale trend by hours. Let's make a pivot chart. First put the cursor inside of the pivot table. Then go to pivot table, analyze, pivot chart. You can choose the chart which you like. I will go to line, select line with markers and OK button. I would like to change this part, which is a Korean setting at the moment, but actually I don't know how I can change it. I tried the following way, select here and then click right hand mouse button, go to format cells, numbers, dates, and select this one, double clicking it, or I try the location to United States, still it's the same. Sorry about this. This is month, this is day. Put the cursor inside of the pivot table. Go to pivot table analyze. Select pivot chart. You can choose the chart which you like. I will go with the line and select with line with markers and OK button. Put your cursor on top of the button. Click right hand mouse button again. Go to hide all field buttons on chart. After that, decimal one more time. Home tab and decrease it. Select the chart. Click the plus button, chart title, go to formula bar, equal sign, select the location of the chart title, control V, home tab, select the color which you like, blue for now, select the chart again, plus sign, remove grid lines, select the chart again, go to format, shape field, no field, shape outline, no outline. The charts are more cleaner and click the lesson, control one button, put them bottom, close it here again, make it bigger. 
if you go to dates, you can actually extend it to deep, more detailed levels. If you click one more time, it goes by hours and click here, hours as well, here, hours as well. The beauty of this part is people chart is also correspondingly changing it here. So you can estimate by hours of your sale activities for each product. As a practice, let's make another table. Selecting all, Control C, enough space, Control V, put the cursor inside, pivot table, analyze, show, select field, list. Put it back the dates. Let's go with the cashier. I will put it here. These select the total. Let's try with the quantity this time. Close it. That is not a dollar. And then select here, home tab, comma style. Let's give a name here. Sale quantity by cashier. Put the cursor inside. Go to pivot table analyze, pivot chart. Select column, clustered column. Okay. Click right hand mouse button. Hide all field button on chart. Select here, plus sign, adding chart title, removing grid lines. Select chart title, equal, select the cell which has chart title. Control V, color, blue. Select the chart, go to format, shape field, no field, shape outline, no outline. Select the lesson, control one, bottom, close it. Make it wider, select vertical axis, deleting it. Click each series, click right hand mouse button, add data label, do same thing for all. We can see which cashier has more sellings. So you can create all different types of people chart as you wish. We can create another new sheet. Just create a statistic sheet here. Select the chart, Control X, go to statistic sheets, Control V. Same for another chart, Control X, Control V. Then we can have a two different statistic as well. As long as we have a new sale history here, we can also update very easily. For updating this part is also quite simple. Go to data tab, click refresh all button. Pivot table, statistics are automatically updating it. In order to avoid the refreshing button, we can also add in this part into VBA, Alt F11, go to store and next, and then adding this line, which is active workbook point refresh all. Pivot table and charts are automatically refreshing it. We did it. I hope that this file gives you small benefits to you. Thank you for watching.